Good morning, Pune. How many of you have been in Pune for more than one year? So I'm the youngest city, and I, each time I come here, I feel energetic. I feel more and more powerful interacting with a lot of young people in Pune, and I feel there is a lot of talk. There is a lot of talk uh, in Delhi, in Mumbai, uh, in Bangalore about the next big Google. You know, they're, they're planning to have Google from India, and I feel the next big Google is going to come from this city, your city. There is, there is just so much energy. Whenever you, you know, you almost feel like some goosebump when you enter the city from where the expressway ends, and then you see these huge number of buildings filled with young people who are trying to make a living, who are trying to innovate every day. And innovation is what I'm going to talk to you about. You know, if a person that is highly unlikely to innovate who did not go to IIT is me, who did not go to IIM is me, who did not have a master's degree or an MBA is me. And I feel that if I can innovate, then trust me, all of you in this room can innovate and do some of those things. Now, I don't know who they were talking about here, because those are all like superb examples or, or uh, mentions that they have. Uh, I'll tell you a story. Um, this person that you just saw, I don't recognize him. I, I really don't. There is this, um, you know, I'll, I'll tell you a story, um, a very precise story that Dilip Kumar once told me, uh, the famous movie star Dilip Kumar. And, uh, and he was telling me about this, this chief justice of uh, one of the courts during the British time. He was a chief justice. His son went to UK to study, 1890, 18, 1880s or something. Now, the gentleman's son, the judge's son, returned to India with a white wife. Now, 1890, imagine you're representing Indians in the court, and your son has come back with a British wife. So there was chaos in the family. There was chaos in Allahabad at that time. So he was very frustrated, and every day the father and son would have altercation. Father and son would have arguments. And one day he was a poet also. He was a poet. Um, the chief judge of Allahabad High Court was also a poet. He picked up his, his son's picture, and he scribbled some lines. And he said, Takalluf bartaraf, which means formality aside, Takalluf bartaraf, tujse to teri tasveer achi. So, those examples are better than what I am. And I, I feel very privileged to have uh, an audience like you. Not too long ago, just 15 years ago, I was contemplating what I would do after graduation. And uh, if you are on a campus of 2,000 students, where you are the highest paid on that year in the campus recruitment, then you end up taking up that job without thinking too much about what you want to do. So if the starting salary or the average salary after bachelor's on campus was $48,000 and you're getting $69,000, there's no question about what next to do. You just take up that job. Now, when I took up that job, the internet was just happening. Amazon was just becoming big. This is 1999 or so. Amazon was becoming big. So I went to this company that I joined it was called American Management System. They were doing technology consulting. They were helping others implement solution, billing solution. There was not a whole lot of innovation. So I told my boss, who was 24 years veteran in that company, I said, we have this great thing coming up. It's called the internet. And everybody was using the internet in terms of email, and some e-commerce was happening. I said, our company is a very established company. Why don't we have an innovation department where we do something where we can attract a lot of young talent and make them leaders of the future. So he did not have a whole great idea as to what to do. So I told him that there is e-commerce that's happening. I told him there are travel portals that are happening. And he was not quite pleased with my idea. Now, imagine if somebody has joined that company in 1974 and you're talking to him about the internet. He's not too impressed. He's like, OK, you know what? We'll do billing system. We'll do legacy system. We'll help the Department of Defense modernize their, 
their systems, etc. So I started thinking what to do next. Now I always knew that I want to start something of my own. Was it going to be that soon in my life? I didn't know that. So I took a ticket. I bought a ticket to come to India, meet my mom on a vacation in 2000. And I did the proverbial, I did the proverbial trick, which means I bought a return ticket, I fooled the airline, I never traveled back on that return ticket. Because at that time, I was convinced that this is where I want to start what I want to do my next, whatever next career move. So I quit my job and I resigned from here on email. How many of you do that? I, I started that company, a lot of people just absconded and then they send their resignation over email. So I started mulling this idea and the idea for mouth shut was with me, was with me during the college years that I was um, doing. So I perfected that idea, hired a lot of people, uh, well initially hired about five, seven people and we built a platform where people would be talking about their experience. The first thing that I came to understand that India is not a very easy place to start your business because first thing that you do is you register your company name and when you register your company name you have to go to registrar of company. The registrar of company told me that your company name mouthshut.com cannot be approved. So there's a process if your company name gets rejected you give two or three other options. I did not have any other option because this was the only name that I had. So he said, no, 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 you can give me some other name. I said, no, what is the next process? He said, you have to go to appeals. Now I went into the appeals department. The appeals department said, oh, well, <coughs> mouthshut.com is not a very, you know, it's not a very good culturally nice name for a company. So I was stumped. 23-year-old guy is being told about culture and moral values about his company. So I said, sir, there is not a whole lot of things that I'm doing. I mean, I'm building a platform for consumer reviews, etc." He said, no, 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 mouthshut.com is not a good name. So I gave him examples of what are good names, but they may not be doing culturally very good things like VH1, MTV. So he said, he had, uh, he had, a, he had, a, he had a heavy duster and he banged it on his desk and he said, and he put a stamp, appeals rejected. Now what do, you, what do you do when you're so passionate about your company and your appeals are rejected as stage one company name registration? You do the great Indian trick, which is influence. Yeah? Everybody's brother, mother, father, sister, husband, uncle, somebody or the other will help you find that connection to make that call. Somebody I know very close knew the chief minister. How, how better than that? Now, the next day I get a call from the chief minister's office, go and meet so and so. So I met Mr. Biswas, who is the regional director of, who was the regional director of registrar of companies for the entire western region, entire western region. Can you imagine? Mumbai rejected it, I get a call from western region. When I go to western region heads of, uh, office, Mr. Biswas was there, he said, oh your company name was rejected, okay. He calls Mr. Pandian. Mr. Pandian is the registrar of Mumbai. Mr. Pandian comes and says, uh, yes sir. So he said, do you know Mr. Faruqi? So he looked at me, he stared at me first. He said, yeah, this guy, I rejected his company name yesterday. He said, why did we reject his name? We got a call from the chief minister's office. So Mr. Pandian says, oh sir, he wanted mouthshut.com, but it's a good name, it's a good name. <laughs> Mr. Faruqi, you should have come to me. Why did you have to go to the chief minister's office? It's a very good name. 24 hours later, not only my company name was was approved, but the company was also approved, which normally takes about seven days. You got to do what you got to do when you start your business. This is a country of opportunities. And if you get into the queue, you'll be standing in the queue. Don't do anything illegal. Don't bribe, but do whatever is possible. That's the first thing I learned. Second thing I learned is real estate and rents kill you in this country. You could, get, you could get the best of offices in America for peanuts of what you'd be paying in Pune and Mumbai and Bangalore. So I started small. I started in a very, very small two-room dilapidated old house 
that belonged to my family, which was on rent, etc. Long story short is my own mother did not believe that I was serious because for her, it meant that if somebody's serious and they start office, office means nice, plush, blah, blah, blah. And here, this guy is ready to work in a dilapidated 125-year-old bungalow, which was almost falling apart. Now, this is what it looks like now, after I restored it. It's one of the most valuable property in Bandra. Because I knew my vision. I knew where I wanted to be at that time. That dilapidated whatever did not matter. People think it's a resort. This is really my office. We have about 120, 155 people working here. This is not a resort. Um, we, have, we have more ho hockey and football space than any other property in Bandra, in this, in this property. Now, what I'm saying here is you start small. You start wherever you feel you can, but keep your dreams high because to make it to this condition, the dilapidated, falling apart building, you know, first time my mom entered this building, I promise you I'm not exaggerating, she covered her nose and her mouth with the dupatta because she thought it's not a good place, there was a lot of bad foul smell, etc., etc. Because I knew what I wanted to transform into. Over a period of a few years, it became like this. And I surrounded myself with a lot of you, young people. This is how we work which I realized that in this country, there is no better company than the company of young people. They challenge you to think differently. They challenge you to think smartly. You could be the CEO of the company, but they will give you perspectives but which you would have never imagined. This is chaotic office. It's chaotic because we're very tight in terms of the number of people that we are accommodating in a short space. But that is where the energy flows. I have forgotten the number of counts of awards, but I remember the number of legal notices that we have received. It's more than 1,000. Now there is the biggest legal notice. Okay, the legal notice, why do we receive legal notice? We started getting legal notice. The first legal notice we got was from an institute called Charter Classes. How many of you have been to Charter Classes? Know somebody who's been to Charter Classes? Well, there used to be a big brand around 2005, 6, 7. Every topper, merit list, uncle's friend, everybody was from Charter Classes. Charter Classes said that those reviews are false. They took us to court for five crores. Well, that never happened. Five crores was very common to be sued for mouth shut. The first time I got a legal notice, I fell off my chair. My heartbeat went to 180. I had to take Ciplar to control my heart rate. Recently, or well, not recently, uh, some, a while ago, we got a legal notice of, guess what? Five crores, 50 crores, 500 crores, 1,000 crores, 2,000 crores from your neighborhood builder called Kumar Developers. Here you are in Pune. They sued us for 2,000 crores, saying there are five reviews on some of their projects in Pune. Those projects have flopped because of the bad reviews on Mouchard. How am I to be blamed? <laughs> so we, we got more than, we, we still keep getting legal notice, cybercrime complaint, arrest warrants, you name it, there it is. So we went to the Supreme Court and we said, what is the problem? And we recognized that the problem were the two laws in the IT Act. One was Section 66A, and one was the IT rules. The Section 66A said, if you post something, you gentlemen, if you post something, I don't like it, I can get you arrested. That was 66A, precisely. The other said that if you post something, I'm hosting it on my website, somebody doesn't like it, I have to remove it in 36 hours. So Mauchet was losing on both the sides. Companies were writing to us saying, remove it. We said, no, we can't remove it. That's our bread and butter. If we remove it, we lose the content. If we don't remove it, they're saying, you give us the IP address and the identity of the person who wrote it, which means you get arrested. 
So we went to the Supreme Court, we challenged this law. In 2012, and it was a bunch of us along with Shreya Singhal. Um, the case came to be known as Shreya Singhal versus Union of India. It also got to be known as Mouchet.com versus Union of India. The judgment came on 24th March 2015. I'm telling you, first time in the history of this country, well, in the last 50 years, a law was repealed for being anti-constitutional towards freedom of speech. And I think this is your victory, honestly. This is your victory because in the last 50 years, there has never been a law that was repealed because of freedom of speech and expression. And it is because of all the protests and all the sacrifice that a lot of young people have made by going to jail that the law was repealed. And I feel this law makes it very clear. As long as you don't violate Article 192G, of the Constitution, which means you don't write something which breaches the security of the country, or the friendly, uh, you know, friendly relations between two countries, or enmity between two countries, etc. Then you are within this form of freedom of speech, the Constitution of this country, and the Constitution you and I did not write. It's those people who sacrificed their lives and they fought for 200 years to write that constitution. They gave us. We are only the inheritors of those great people and their vision. And we are, we are beneficiaries. We should be celebrating that. There has never been a better time to be a startup entrepreneur in this country. If you want to start in this country, this is the time. This is better than when I was. Because there is nobody who is going to start you to understand what does dot com in your business means. There, is, there will be nobody who will stop you from rejecting your company name. People are facilitating business. Prime Minister of this country, down to the end clerk and the babu in the department, everybody wants you to start a business. I'm telling you, there has never been a better, better time in the last 200 years in this country. Now, we got to make a resolve. We have always been, as a nation, our nation of shopkeepers. Shopkeeper means you have one person who's drawing something, who's opening up his shop, closing it at the end of the day, probably making enough for his family. We are entrepreneurs. We're going to transform this nation from a nation of shopkeepers to a nation of entrepreneurs and create millions and millions of jobs. Thank you.